Welcome to module 3.5, Public Genome Repositories for SARS-CoV-2. This presentation is a part of the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Michael Wiegand, and I'm a bioinformatician with the CDC. This module describing public sequence data repositories is part of a collection of training materials and resources meant to help you begin analyzing SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of case studies and training materials to help you get started supplementing epidemiology with genome sequence data. In the welcome module of this toolkit, AMD director, Dr. Greg Armstrong, highlighted the rationale for sequencing SARS-CoV-2 at both the local and national scales. Much of the toolkit's materials focus on the local scale and applications of SARS-CoV-2 sequencing for genomic epidemiology. Importantly, collecting and openly sharing genomic sequence data can both supplement local investigation and act as the link to connect local activities to support broader national public health efforts like strain surveillance, and monitoring diagnostic performance. We have witnessed unprecedented sharing of viral genome sequence data across the globe from the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic. This open data sharing empowers real-time snapshots of the evolving virus population with tools like Nextrain and Pangolin and has enabled rapid, effective vaccine development. Therefore, depositing sequence data into public repositories should be an integral step in the SARS-CoV-2 sequencing workflow at every laboratory. And the importance of attaching consistent clinical and epidemiological metadata cannot be overstated. Although this module does not cover the details of data submission, some links to helpful resources are included on the toolkit webpage. This module looks at two public repositories commonly used for collecting and sharing SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data and associated metadata. The first is GISAID, which stands for the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data. As the name suggests, it was born from the desire to facilitate rapid data sharing for flu viruses collected in what's called the EpiFlu database. That existing infrastructure was quickly adapted to also accommodate SARS-CoV-2 sequence data, organized in a similar database called EpiCove. The other is NCBI, which is the National Center for Biotechnology Information, a division of the National Library of Medicine within the US government's National Institutes of Health. Many are likely familiar with at least some of the other biomedical resources provided by NCBI, like GenBank and PubMed, or sequence analysis tools like BLAST. NCBI is the biggest repository of nucleotide sequence data from all domains of life and further integrates those data with other NLM resources like PubMed, as well as databases for analysis with BLAST. As we'll see, the two repositories are organized differently, and their SARS-CoV-2 sequence data are often used for different purposes. Unfortunately, there's no direct standardized link between records shared in the two, and thus many laboratories submit sequences to both. So users of these data may need to perform deduplication before certain analyses. Both repositories maintain index collections of SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data and associated metadata. This module highlights some key features of each and tips for searching these databases for sequences to supplement local phylogenetic analyses or investigations, which can be particularly useful in contexts where sequencing is being performed by multiple institutions like public health and university laboratories. This plot illustrates the number of assembled SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence entries submitted to GISAID and NCBI from laboratories in the United States, spanning the months from June 2020 to March 2021. Both repositories continue to grow rapidly with a clear acceleration at the beginning of 2021 as interest in new variants and national surveillance began in earnest. GISAID hosts a larger collection of entries and continues to receive the most submissions, likely reflecting the ease and speed with which the repository was adapted from its original design to collect influenza data. Whether or not you're familiar with GISAID, you've likely already encountered some benefits of the EpiCove database because certain applications popular for monitoring SARS-CoV-2 evolution 
and genomic epidemiology depend on these data. For example, many public next-strain trees, including those maintained by the CDC SPHERES consortium, are calculated with sequences pulled directly from GISAID. And similarly, Pango lineage definitions, which are often used to describe notable SARS-CoV-2 variants, are also calculated using a collection of GISAID sequences. It's likely because of these tools and they're pulled directly from GISAID that many SARS-CoV-2 sequence data continue to be preferentially submitted to that repository. This screenshot of the GISAID website shows an overview of what's included within the EpiCove database. This module will look briefly at the search function accessible here at the top, but know that GISAID regularly performs several analysis and provides some summary reports of the database, just a few of which are listed here. GISAID's EpiCove database is huge. On the day this module was recorded, nearly 900,000 entries had been submitted from around the globe. Thankfully, the web portal enables interactive query to search for specific entries based on various epidemiologic fields. For example, defining specific geographic location at multiple levels, like continent, country, or even down to the state, providence, or region, as well as a range of collection dates. Queries can also be performed using a few viral genetic characteristics. For example, the presence of specific amino acid substitutions within the spike protein or assignment to known variant classifications. Each of these search criteria can be used individually or in combination. Selected entries that meet the search criteria can be analyzed directly on the GISAID website using Cove Server an application that highlights interesting candidate amino acid changes to further experimental analysis. Or entries can be downloaded for local analysis using a preferred software tool like Microbe Trace or a local installation of Nextstream. A few format options are available when downloading selected entries. One can download the assembled consensus viral genome sequences in standard FASTA format for analysis with many phylogenetic software applications or download a tab-separated metadata table with specimen information and either patient data or technical information about the sequencing methods. You could also extract a list of GISAID accession IDs from these metadata tables and share it with your bioinformatics staff to request they be included in something like the local Nextstream build, for example. Whichever format you prefer when downloading these data, be mindful of the terms of use outlined in the GISAID database access agreement which stipulates how the data can be used while appropriately acknowledging the submitters. A link to the terms of use is included here. Alternatively, individual records can be retrieved using the accession ID, sometimes referred to as the ISL accession or simply ISL number. For example, perhaps while analyzing sequences from your laboratory using a tool like Usher, you've identified a closely related public sequence stored in the EpiCove database. Query with the accession ID allows access to detailed information about the viral genome sequence, patient metadata, sample information, and the submitter. The sequence and metadata in the entry can be downloaded, and there's also a web form to contact the submitter directly via email. Again, keep in mind the GISAID terms of use when accessing or using these data. Now let's turn to NCBI, which houses a breadth of resources for biomedical and other scientific disciplines. This module will only highlight a few features regarding storage of microbial pathogen sequence data, including for SARS-CoV-2, which are organized in the simplified database hierarchy illustrated by this schematic. Note the three main layers to this organization. At the top, bioproject records, as the name implies, describe research projects or study goals, and usually something about the included data types or sample scope. Occasionally, multiple bioprojects are collected under what's known as an umbrella project. And a link to the umbrella project for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing conducted by laboratories in the US is included on the toolkit webpage. Below that, Biosample entries contain descriptions of the physical biological specimen, the source material from which the data is derived, and any metadata. These can describe primary specimens like nasal swabs or purified pathogen cultures. 
multiple biosample entries are often linked to a common bio project. Finally, the actual sequence data reside at the bottom. And because multiple data types can be generated from a single specimen or sample, many data entries can link to a single biosample bio record. Discrete data types are stored in separate databases. Within the scope of this module, the most relevant databases are GenBank and Nucleotide, which store consensus genome assemblies similar to GISAID. NCBI also stores raw sequencing read data in what's called the Sequencing Read Archive, abbreviated SRA, that are available for analysis outside the scope of this module. Just note that it's standard practice in many laboratories conducting microbial pathogen sequencing to submit both the consensus genome assembly and raw sequencing data for every specimen. Notice how this organization differs from GISAID, which stores the metadata and assembled genome sequences together as one entry in the EpiCove database. That simplicity benefits from GISAID's specialization, whereas NCBI accommodates a wider range of data types and biological sources, flexibility that de demands more complex organization. Thankfully, NCBI does well to hide some of that complexity when searching the sequence databases, and the collection of SARS-CoV-2 resources are all accessible via the link here, which is also included on the toolkit webpage. From here, it's possible to access all SARS-CoV-2 assembled genome sequences and raw sequencing reads, even if they are spread across multiple combinations of bioproject and biosample record. NCBI also provides an interactive dashboard to search for SARS-CoV-2 consensus genome assembly records at the link provided here and on the toolkit webpage. You can also find this page with a simple web search for NCBI virus. For example, interactive searches based on geography and time are made by simply clicking to highlight an individual state or even multiple states, or by defining a range of collection dates at the bottom. Soon, NC NCBI will be adding more widgets to further define searches based on viral genetic characteristics, including specific mutations and pango lineages. Notice that these filters are applied to the data summary counts listed in the blue box at the top. And when clicking the button to view and download results, the data listed are already filtered according to these criteria. Here's the list of sequences captured by the geographic and collection date filters from the previous slide, which are indicated on the left side, Georgia, USA, and dates January 20 to March 2nd, 2021. From here, the selection can be further defined according to more search criteria on the left, which include both technical metrics like sequence length and sample metadata. Selected sequences can then be analyzed further right in the browser with either an annotated multiple sequence alignment or a simple phylogenetic tree. Note that both provide a quick comparison of the selected sequences, but may not be ideal inputs for thorough downstream analysis. The selection can also be downloaded for analyses in other preferred software tools. Like GISAID, NCBI allows downloading the selected records in a few different formats. As before, download the consensus viral genome sequences in standard FASTA format for analysis with many phylogenetic software tools. NCBI also allows downloading only the annotated gene or predicted protein sequences, also in FASTA format or download a list of selected accession numbers to share with your bioinformatics colleagues to request they be included in some local analyses, or download a comma-separated metadata table with specimen information, similar to what's shown in the table used for making the selection. Knowing how to search public genome repositories and download relevant SARS-CoV-2 sequences can provide valuable context to analyses of local data generated in individual public health laboratories. This can be particularly useful for laboratories just getting started with only a few sequences or in jurisdictions where sequencing is conducted by multiple institutions. Consensus genome assemblies in FASTA format from different sources can be combined for analyses using most phylogenetic software, including NextStrain, MicrobeTrace, and Usher, which are highlighted in other modules of this toolkit that are listed here. In summary, 
collecting and openly sharing SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data ensures the greatest benefit to both local and national public health efforts. These sequence data are primarily organized in two popular repositories that can be efficiently queried to supplement local analyses, as well as support large open source projects to track virus evolution, such as Nextrain and Pangolin. Therefore, depositing sequence data and associated metadata into public repositories should be an integral step in the SARS-CoV-2 sequencing workflow of every laboratory. While the details of submission are outside the scope of this module, some links to helpful resources are provided on the toolkit webpage, including information about SARS-CoV-2 contextual metadata standards from the Public Health Alliance for Genomic Epidemiology, also known as PHAGE. This concludes module 3.5. Part three of this toolkit focuses on useful tools and skills to apply genomic data, and in particular, to integrate that data with epidemiologic or clinical data. The three modules listed here include details for analyzing sequence data that can be downloaded from public repositories highlighted in the current module. Please visit the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you can find further reading on this topic, as well as a short survey to provide feedback about this module. On the Toolkit page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new modules and materials are released. Thank you.